Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about the ACW Tactical MacGyver pouch. I bought this empty bag from ACW Tactical from Tom. Tom and his family own this business here in New York and they customize and hand sew these bags here. This is a 300 to 600 denier type of bag I think and it's pretty rugged. It's not waterproofed but you can spray DWR on it to waterproof it. This is like your similar to a EMT Riverway pouch. They do sell extra bags that you can add on to the sides of here. These are my own bags here. They don't sell these on the website, but they do have these ACW tactical satellite pouches, which you can add to this main pouch here. This is the main pouch that I got, and I've had these bags for a little bit here. So I decided to create a EDC kit, a newer type of EDC kit with EMP, CME resistant capabilities, and we'll get into that later. But here's the front of the pouch here. Molly Pals webbing in the front here. These Velcro flap wings kind of secure these bags to the side. On the side of this, you can't see it, but there's a single row of Molly Pals webbing that these bags are attached to. So this extra stability helps these bags stay on the actual main bag pretty safely. And then we, we have some stuff in the front, obviously, too. Here's the top here. The bag does come with the straps here. And uh, I did add a Petzl carabiner to the top for the handle here and we have the buckle system and the velcro strap attachment system and the these uh, inverted type of uh, zippers which is good for keeping water out and then on the back I've added a small little sling for carrying on the shoulder and we have the platform of which you can tear this off from so here is the velcro point which comes off of the pack but it's secured via the buckle buckle system on it and then we have the palace molly webbing attachment points on the back along with the straps and then we have the bottom here with some extra straps sewn into the bottom as well to attach other items to hang off the bag i'm going to try to do this the best i can without bumping into the camera or the microphone since we're limited on space now i have a list of what we have inside the bag here And we'll briefly go over it. We have signaling devices, water, shelter, fire starting, building materials, lighting tools. Uh, the second page here, if I can get to it. There we go. Writing devices, navigation devices, medical and toiletry items. We have electronics in there too as well. And radio accessories. And finally, we have some miscellaneous items on there as well. And that was about 65 items in there or so, roughly, categorized. And I do plan on adding more and changing some things out based on the environmental issues. Speaking of that, this is designed just for a small, short excursion from the car. It's a car kit. It doesn't have car tools. I do have car tools in another kit. But this one's just basically grab and kind of go for about maybe uh, about three or four miles. That's about it from home. And it's designed just for that. And to give me some items I might need while I'm on the road too. So there's a couple of things that can change in the kit obviously so tailor it to whatever needs you might want if you're looking to build a kit i thought this might give you an idea about maybe how to build yours if you wanted to build one but moving along we're going to start with this pouch here on the side it's an extra pouch i added it's the same exact one as this one here as you can see and let's turn this up and take a look inside on this external flap these have Flaps here, which are held by these looking loop of fields, and uh, we have two chem lights just for easy access. And I'm going to do the zipper here. This is pretty empty. I'm going to be putting food and other items in there based on my environmental needs and durations. But I do keep a survival blanket. This is one of two that I have in the pack itself. So this is the first sheltering option that I have in case I need to put up a quick shelter. I have thought about putting a more in-depth tarp system in there if it will fit but I do want to save some room for some food so it's a compromise right moving along we have the water filtration part of the kit along with the uh, cleaning part of the kit so we have a Sawyer SP128 filter this is the primary filter I do have a secondary filter inside the bag so the Sawyer SP128 with the syringe back flusher the straw and the 500 milliliter dirty water bag to use and then we have the toothbrush inside along with toothpaste inside a Ziploc bag to kind of keep everything somewhat contained. And that's it for the side pouch, the water filtration lighting shelter pouch. 
on this side pouch is uh, electronics mainly and they're housed inside a type of bag called the NX3 Faraday bag. Now I have two bags in there and it's a triple layer bag inside this pouch here. It's supposed to be EMP CME resistant up to about negative 80 dB of attenuation over about from HF frequencies up to 2.4 gigahertz approximately. Now variances in tolerances differ in that area but it's basically a copper and nickel lined triple layered bag so it does work i've tested it out and reviewed it on the on my previous videos if you want to see but in this pouch here we have a two meter helical antenna from my kimbo th f6a and i'll show you what the bag looks like at least the emp resistant bag that's inside a ziploc bag this is the silver bag here the radio stays inside here and uh I do have some duplicate items I can show you so you can see what's in the bag. I'm not going to take this out because that'll be a pretty long video and frankly kind of boring. So we'll kind of make everything quick here. We have the Kenwood THX F6A here. Now this is a tri-band radio and has 0.5 megahertz to about 1.3 gigahertz. Does lower sideband, upper sideband, AM, FM, narrow FM, wide FM. CW mode, and uh, I can't remember if there's anything else that might be missing in that, but basically it's a really kick-ass receiver for its size, okay? So it's basically a tri-band radio with great reception for its size, and I do have the charging cables with it in the bag too as well. So that's what I have in that first silver bag that I showed you, and the next one that we're going to go through is the main part. This is the other main part of the electronics section. Another NX3 bag here from Faraday Defense. And inside there I, I have the items I'm going to show you. I'm not going to take it out because it would take too long to do that. But here's some of the duplicate items that I have in there. I do have a ULG Ultralast AA solar charger. It's kind of gimmicky but it does work if given enough time in certain conditions. So. Uh, it outputs USB current and it charges nickel to hydride AA batteries, which part of my system uses. Next up, we have the Nikkor NU05 headlamp. It's a micro headlamp. Runs for about an hour or so and different varied modes that it has. It has red LEDs and white LEDs. It has a micro USB slot for recharging the internal battery. So I have that in the bag as well. It can charge off of that solar panel. And then finally, as a backup electronics item, I do have a, a small I1R2 EOS light. This is a small pill light. It has two modes, very small fly lumen mode. And then we have the higher mode, which is about 15 minutes. And you can charge it with the micro USB cable. Now, what I don't have to show you, but it's also in there, I have a charging cable for the Kenwood TH F6A, the VX7R, which I carry on my persons a lot, and the VX1R as well and a, a variety of uh, USB-C and micro USB cables as well in that bag. So just as an extra redundancy, that's why I keep it. Uh, this is one of the first kits that I've built with EMP resistance in mind. So kind of exploring that idea on how to integrate it. I've been upgrading my other previous EDC bags with those NX3 bags, which I do recommend. Now let's get into the main kit. I'm going to do this kind of in a careful way not to bump the microphone and the camera setup because it's very tight here today but let's take off the wings here and move in they added these wings on the second generation of this bag the macgyver bag it's been out for a couple years now but i think it's a great idea that they did that and as you can see it definitely still holds these things in here these would kind of flop around if they didn't have the velcro attachment point systems here so, very good idea. Excellent job, Tom. And we're going to undo the belt buckle here. And I'm going to try to open this up in a organized manner. So, this comes apart, unzips, in a clamshell formation, which I love. I like my clamshell bags because I can easily access everything in it if I need to. Okay, let's put that down. And try not to knock over the mic. Okay. Let's pull this back out a little bit so you guys can kind of see this swing here. We have the Claris TP20Ti pen light combo. This one's in a 10180 battery. has two modes, much like the i1 or 2 EOS, low and high mode. And this has a Schmidt P950 ink cartridge inside. 
with a cap cover and a tungsten tip at the front. <clears throat> you would unscrew this and you can access the cartridge to the right. So I do keep a pen like combo in there. Next to it, we have a mechanical pencil with a cap on to protect the lead. And then we have a Sharpie marker here. Next to it, we have an I5T from Olight, AA light, two modes, pretty straightforward. Excuse me for one, one moment. <coughs> uh, my throat's kind of itchy and dry. So it's held in with this Velcro tab here, this wing, this first wing. And this is part of the customization that I liked about this pouch. This is the custom part of the pouch here. And you can take these out, these two wings, if you want to save on space in the bag. But I find it helps me organize a lot of my stuff. On this wing here, we have the... You can probably see that in the camera, yeah. So we have a... Uh, hand sanitizer, Perel. We have the whistle signaling devices, the whistle and the signaling mirror behind here. And then next to it, we have another lighting source. So I typically keep three accessible lighting sources in case I need them. It's a little bit of redundancy, but it works pretty well. This is the i1R2 EOS Pro. This is the newer light that came out from Olight just recently. It has two modes. It's USB-C rechargeable as opposed to micro USB-C rechargeable. Five lumens on the low mode and about 130 lumens in the high mode, and it runs for about 23 minutes instead of about, I think, 15 minutes for the other one. So it's internal battery, rechargeable, pill light, very useful to have, and uh, fits pretty well in, in the pouch here, along with the air dampened mic, a little mini compass here, and the fire starting tenor that I have there. In this pouch here, I have the 11 Micra. This is a small multi-use tool. I'm gonna try to get out here and show you. This is the secondary multi-tool in the pack. I do have another one. Next to it, we have the Yuko Stormproof Matches in the here with Ziploc bag. So basically it has the striker and the, and the Stormproof Matches to start up anywhere, anytime you want, even if they're wet. Next to it, we have more fire starting capabilities. In this pouch, we have some birthday candles and we have a Bic lighter with beeswax, hemp wick wrapped around the lighter, including the depressor, so you don't lose the... Uh, the, the fuel in the Bic lighter, and they're all housed inside of a Ziploc bag as well. So that is this, this side, this wing area. And uh, the secondary organization pocket is pretty cool over here. Wing, if you want to call it that. Uh, we have a couple items. We have a USB micro charging cable in the top pouch here. Next to it, we have an ACW tactical fishing kit, which they sell on the website. Now, this bag comes in two configurations. It comes in a empty configuration which you can customize like I did or you can buy it with these modules that they sell on the website ACW sells these cool little box modules which keeps everything organized has a literature documentation of what's inside and how to use it and this is their fishing kit and I was lacking a fishing kit so I got it from their website pretty affordable very very good customer service and good quality items inside so this is the fishing kit Next to it, we have a USB-C cable on this port here. And then uh, we also have a, uh, if you wet this condensed towel, it'll open up and expand. You can use it. Next to it, we have the uh, dental floss, about 25 feet, waxed, mint. And then underneath it, I do have a mounting system for my Nikkor NU Zero headlamp to go on a bar or something like that in this pouch here in the bottom. Over here, we have some Pepto-Bismol type tablets. Next to it, we have another condensed towel. Over here, we have I-beam profene. And then up here, we have some Tylenol. And that's pretty much it for this side of the wing here. Uh, so very, very organized. You can, again, you can take these out of the, the main compartment here. There's a Velcro attachment point, which you kind of see in the video here. But that's how these can come out. I'm going to pull this out a little bit, just a little bit, so you can kind of see a little bit better look in the uh, pouch there. On the right here, I added this... Radio Pen, AMF from Radio Pen. It's made by KSAR, I think is the brand. It's an old pen, comes from the early 2000s. It has a smaller uh, stereo jack system, which controls the volume and the on-off switch on it, and some earphones to listen to radio stations. I wanted something that if there was a certain EMP or e CME event, this would be expendable. Instead of pinning an actual ham radio in there, I have it protected in the 
kit here. So expendable items, anything electronic in this core kit, uh, it's expendable to me. But again, I wanted a way to monitor something without having to go through all the stuff in the back. So that's why I have a secondary radio in the kit and it does work pretty well. And it also is a pen, which does write, but it's not primary, primarily for that use. Moving along underneath it, we have this brown credit card duct tape item. It's basically a credit card with duct tape wrapped around it about six feet or seven feet or so. So an okay amount, not the best amount, but it works pretty well in a pinch. We have some safety pins here, about five in the center Velcro strap. And again, this is highly organized. Uh, this bag the way they customized it and then on the side here if you kind of see i have a yellow see the summit dry sack that's about two liters and then next to it i have my pace counter beads for land navigation so that's the front part of the main pouch on the second part behind this mesh holder we have a small little case which my antenna came in and i can use that for something random items and then we have the sunto a10 compass basic plate compass with a protractor in there and I forget the measurements that it has on it but just your basic compass I keep it in a plastic bag and underneath it is the little extra bonus item that Tom sent me it's their ACW tactical uh, manual in the back there so it came with a couple of Fresnel lenses and a little pencil so thank you for that Tom it's basically a survival guide pocket field manual on, on how to do survival things so it's always good to have some kind of a literature to read and go by in case you don't remember things and I'm still learning myself personally so a good little manual to get from ACW Tactile I do recommend getting that uh, moving along I'm going to close this up and go over the other wings of the pouch here we're going to kind of try to turn this around without bumping into the mic and camera and lighting setup so i do apologize for that looks like we kind of hit the mic a little bit there but should be okay all right so this opens up from one one pouch here we'll go over that in a moment well let's go over with this new section here i have a bunch of uh, zip ties here and this little webbing and underneath it there's another webbing which houses my i don't know if you can kind of see it but this is my half inch by five inches in length quarter or half of half an inch thickness ferrous rod and it comes with a striker and some paracord attached to it so this this thing is pretty pretty hefty man like if you want to start a fire that's pretty kick ass there <laughs> um moving along though we do have the uh basic handkerchief or bandana if you will cotton bandana white and then we have the bug net for the head in case you have bugs bugging you out there in the field which i might where i live then we have the uh chem light a third chem light in here in the main pouch so again if i have to jettison these two side wings i still have something of a backup non-electronical light to use and then we have some cordage about 35 feet i think of 95 single core pound cordage and again about maybe i want to say five feet of 325 cordage and then about perhaps i want to say this is about maybe another five feet of 550 cordage on the uh, bay right ferrous rod with the striker moving along next to these items you can see the secondary water filter this is the hydra blue and i do have the extra water filter inside the other bag here and then we have a leatherman sidekick underneath that so and then we have the leatherman or not leatherman but dozer k-bar knife this is a full tang knife with the paracord wrapped around it so that's it for this section here i'm going to try to shift this over so you guys can see this in this here we do have some tp in a plastic bag we have a small boo boo ouchie kit we have a sewing repair kit inside of here a bug x anti-bug chemical wipes deet basically i do have a one liter uh emergency water bag here that folds up and then we have lip balm in here as well and a couple of other smaller items we have another mylar blanket again this is the secondary micro mylar blanket in the main kit so if i have to again jettison those two side pouches save weight i can do that and that's pretty much it for the uh, kit here it's got a lot of items inside it's my first kit that I've actually built that has 
EMP resistances in mind, and it's obviously a huge kit, bigger than my most of my EDC kits. So that's why I've kind of relegated it to a car kit. I can wear it on my belt. I can wear it on my persons as a sling type of pouch, which does work. It's not the most optimal, but I do have the option to do that. The thing I like about ACW Tactical, Tom and, and his company, is him and his brother pretty much uh, make these bags by hand and sewn. It's pretty cool. Uh, they have a lot of customization, a lot of organization to them. And as you can see, you can remove things, save weight, modify it to your needs. So whenever I show you these EDC videos, don't do exactly what I do. Just take it with a grain of salt and customize it to your needs. So this is not going to fulfill the role for most people and their needs. So hopefully it inspires you to make your own kit and fruit and figure out what you want to do with your stuff. This is just how I run my stuff. And obviously it's going to change based on experience and environmental conditions. So that being said, there's some things I like to add to it. Uh, more food in my kit, obviously, and other things like that. Overall, I think the bag quality is good. Uh, suggestions, I guess, for improvements. I don't really have too many other than make it a little bit bigger. So that when these things get packed up, maybe we can have a little more flowing space but then that's not really their problem it's my fault so again user error right that being said definitely check out acw tactical i think they make a great run of selective products they have other items too on their website their full kit is pretty cool check out their modules that they add they have for this you can add it to your other kits if you want you can just get the satellite pouches if you want uh, they are an american business they do everything by hand so I'm pretty happy to support that and uh, give them the, uh, the homage or the uh, d that they're due, in my opinion. The uh... So that is the ACW kick. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I do appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys later.